one of the mathematics advisors here in the math department. Well, in short, you can go into any career. Right. Every, uh, every kind of discipline utilizes it a lot. And it's just, um, maybe it's a good thing and also, also a bad thing. But um, even in the field like economics, mathematics is heavily used there. Statistics, very much used there. Even in political science, very much used with the probability of statistics used there. It's not like outrightly kind of like said that you have to use uh, mathematics. Uh, but you do, if you have an interest in political science, there is a, a niche for mathematicians to work in that area as well. But say in chemistry, physics, there's a lot of mathematics used there. And the math majors can go into that area as well. So um, given the fact that mathematics is, uh, is valued in all disciplines, students can go into a lot of different areas. Now, they have to do some extra side work or maybe a minor in order to kind of like be proficient or develop a background in that additional area. The closest math related majors are going to be the math econ, the physics, uh, the engineering. Um, there might be some, some kind of like overlap in the cognitive sciences. Um, but uh, math will kind of side more with the physical sciences as well as the technical majors out there. Uh, it doesn't always have to be related to the social sciences, but almost every discipline leverages things like the statistics and probability uh, in order to, to do what they do at the higher level. Uh, so mathematics uh, is related to other areas like, say, maybe psychology or even in the, um, the political science. Just based off on the kind of what's laid out, math uh, CS is about seven math classes and then another seven, ma uh, uh, seven additional classes where uh, they could come from CS and math or just three CS and another four math. So uh, there's a lot more flexibility. So you're looking at maybe um, 11 to, uh, seven to 11 math classes for math CS. Um, math econ, on the other hand, is strictly gonna be seven or eight math and seven or eight econ. And so the, uh, those two differ in the number of courses there. Math CS requires the three CS upper division classes. There's no CS required in econ. Um, now, if I was to compare only Math CS and CS, the sheer number of uh, classes is going to differ. I think you have to take like 600 CS upper division courses. <laughs> um, but you do have to take a lot more uh, CS upper division classes. Math CS only requires 14 upper division classes, three of those being CS, and then you can have an additional four more CS. So the maximum number of CS courses in the math CS major is gonna be seven, but it can be from three to seven courses at once. And so there's a limitation in the uh, number of CS classes you can take, but you can take additional ones if you have the time and uh, I guess resources to take additional courses. But you're, you're already gonna take seven math courses upper division, there is no real math emphasis in computer science engineering. There is, from where I stand, there isn't any. There isn't any math classes that, uh, oh, there isn't any CS courses that you cannot take um, because you're a math CS major. Now, you don't have to take CSE 20 or 21. You can take that, but that's not required by the major. Um, you're instead, your math 109 will be counted as like CS, CSE 20. And the math 184A will be counted as like the prerequisite for for other upper division courses that CSE 21 does. So, uh, in terms of other upper division courses, um, there uh, you can take any any upper division CS class uh, that might be used as elective courses. So there isn't any kind of restriction on. Uh, what CS classes you can take as a math CS major. Students are allowed to take uh, other CS courses that upper division CS courses to fulfill their electives. 
And so even though there's a list online on the major requirements uh, for list B and list C, uh, students are uh, encouraged to petition to um, take other CSC courses in place of the ones that we've listed as well. Um, so when students are choosing upper division uh, CSC courses, they should look at the prerequisites and make sure that the prerequisites are classes they've already taken. Hopefully, it's mainly restricted to CSC 100, 101, 105, because we don't require any other courses. But if there is other CSC courses, uh, upper division that require other upper division CSC courses outside of the 100, 101, 105, then students are, in a sense, um, restricted from enrolling unless they end up taking that class. Mm -hmm. So, or asking the instructor to allow them to do, take that class. The course that students really need to focus attention on to really get an idea and grasp upper division mathematics, it would be Math 109. That's the bread and butter of what really makes math different from other disciplines. Um, a lot of people uh, compare that to other courses and other disciplines and call it leader course. I don't think it's really that. It really is just the kind of like um, uh, exemplary kind of course that shows you what math is, the language of mathematics, uh, how we communicate, and how we understand uh, theorems and proofs um, for this discipline. So before you can really uh, do other upper division courses, you have to know how to speak and listen as a mathematician, and Math 109 really does that for students. The minor requirements as of now uh, will be um, seven courses in mathematics. Now, the minor allows you to use three um, lower division courses. Uh, they could be from 20D, E, and F. And so if you do take all the 20 series, you can use those three and then only need to take four more additional upper division math courses. Uh, you, you don't have to take 109, but since a lot of upper division courses require 109, students do take 109 as one of them, and that, that makes it three more classes. Given that um, in the following year, Math 18 is gonna, going to replace uh, Math 20F, that those requirements uh, will change a little bit, but still seven courses in mathematics will fulfill um, the, my, the math mathematics minor. Math minors are very useful if students plan out and know what uh, they want to study and what they want to learn. Now, every discipline might be a little bit different. Maybe uh, ECE majors might want to take courses on partial differential equations and complex analysis because those are related to the ECE field. Um, maybe they might want to take more classes in statistics and probability to be better at benchmarking and doing some test studies. Uh, so. But if students are just taking random classes here and there, um, taking one numerical class here and taking one differential equations class there, and they, they will get a sense of mathematics, but more of a sampling. But if they end up taking uh, a modeling class together um, with other specific classes, then they can really develop the whole breadth of this one area, and that minor can really supplement their major really well. Questions usually students have are uh, trying to understand um, what a lot of upper division mathematics really is and how it can be applied to certain disciplines that they want to go into. And so the difficult part is a lot of mathematics is so useful in all these different areas that there's not just one kind of specific thing. Like if you took probability course, there, there's a lot of different areas that uses probability and statistics. And it's just not one place. And if you took numerical analysis, well, people don't fully understand what analysis is yet, and they don't know what numerical analysis is. So uh, students are kind of baffled by all these new terminology, like complex analysis or uh, partial differential equations. And they've never been exposed to this, so they, these, uh, these titles um, are very obscure, and they don't know what exactly uh, career, what careers utilize these skills. And so it's help, very helpful for students to do their own research to see what is it that they'll learn in certain disciplines and certain uh, fields and how their career might utilize or not even utilize these things. Uh, so it's, 
it, students have to really do a lot of homework on their own um, to really uh, see what is it that um, what analysis is or algebras or combinatorics and after they understand these things how it can be applied through their own perspective to a certain field because a lot of these things common torques doesn't always have to be in computer science it can be used in other areas as well just like numerical analysis isn't just used in computer science is in using anything that's computational and so you can see it uh, using numerical analysis in say uh, SIO uh, Scripps Institute Oceanography kind of courses or even in engineering courses or maybe even in physics and so uh, these are very um, broad fields that can be applied into different areas uh, based off on what they uh, what they need. Uh, the most difficult uh, courses uh, hands down without any kind of like uh, subjectiveness would be the abstract algebra 100A, B, and C as well as the real analysis 140A, B, C. Those are hands down going to be the most difficult math courses because they are designed to be the most difficult math courses to prepare students for graduate school in mathematics. Um, now what other classes are challenging? That varies based off on how the instructor uh, designs the course as well as how um, uh, uh, what's being taught and it, it becomes subjective on what kind of background students have whether or not um, students have developed a strong background in probably statistics or or not and so a lot of students might find the more computational uh, courses uh, easier because uh, that's what they um, have experienced in the lower 23s courses um, some students have even found like the the proofs courses a lot easier because there is not a lot of computation it's more like creating arguments and writing out proofs and that could be easier for students too. So different courses emphasize different kind of skills and for some students if computation is challenging maybe uh, the 170 numerical analysis with a lot of MATLAB might be difficult to others that might be very easy because they did really well in MATLAB they're really good with matrix computation so the numerical methods and analysis courses could be easier. Research opportunities is uh, a little bit different in mathematics, and so students need to develop a strong background in mathematics first, meaning they have to take the algebra and analysis sequence, uh, the real analysis and abstract algebra, and what students have to do is have an idea of what they want to focus their uh, research on. So it, it's not so much that I want to do research and do you have a research spot for me? You really have to seek out. That professor does something really interesting and I want to learn more about that and want to know how I can conduct research in that area. Mathematics is not one of those areas where you kind of just show up, help out with some incubation or um, doing some sort of lab work that doesn't require um, uh, knowledge of that area. You know, you're just helping out. In mathematics, uh, the laboratory is all in your head, and so you have to be able to contribute with your knowledge about how to solve certain problems or prove certain things, come up with something uh, unique, and so that requires a lot of uh, background in other areas of mathematics. And so students have to really do a lot more than what their coursework requires in order to engage in research. That might require some guidance and help with faculty, but students have to have that motivation on their own to do it. So if students want to do research in mathematics, they should contact a faculty and try to figure out how they can take their interests and their background further than what their classes is allow. But usually it's at the later end when they've taken a lot of mathematics courses, then they can start pushing it a little bit further. But if they've only started taking the first quarter in analysis, that's not enough, hardly enough to uh, start thinking about math uh, research. It's good to think about it. but you have to take a lot more and have a, 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 a clear vision of what you want to apply uh, your knowledge towards. And so just knowing that you want to apply it toward computer science is one thing, but how are you going to apply that using, say, common torques 
and using, say, cryptography together with probability and then going a little bit further with that, or maybe some uh, using numerical analysis, learning about compression and things of that sort. You know, you, you have to go a little bit further once you've taken the foundational courses. There's actually a lot of reasons, and is um, everybody's different. So, one of the reasons is that there might be an expectations that the undergraduate courses that they might have taken, or the high school classes that they might have taken, uh, is what they expect upper division math to be. And for the most part, it is good that students excel in the math twenty series or in calculus and differential equations, but upper division mathematics and higher level mathematics uh, requires a lot more rigor and proofs as opposed to computation. And so there are the probability statistics and numerical analysis that do involve computation, but uh, also mathematics is a, is a more uh, a discipline that involves arguments, explanations, uh, proofs, and you know a little bit more um, uh, analysis of reasons why things exist or um, how we know certain things um, work the way they do.